Hello, this is Leah with Scraptastic Patchwork. Welcome to Scrap Busting 2021. This is the project we will be making today. A couple days ago, it was really cruddy out and I was really needing a project that inspired me, full of color, and made me happy. And so I grabbed my scraps from my cutting island from the reorg series if you want to check that out and i started playing and this is what i came up with it's really versatile and obviously colorful and you can put your own personality into it let's begin what inspired this purse is that a couple weeks ago i was sorting through my trims and ribbons and bias tape this is all vintage except for this one and i had so much that i thought i gotta come up with a project that uses my bias tape my seam tape and all those trims and ribbons that I have. And the first thing I thought of was, I also had this Clover Quick Bias, and this is uh, something that's used to make like stained glass quilts. And so I had this and I thought, well, it's, it's nice, but you know, this is nice and compact. <laughs> this has a lot of bulk, so I wanna use this. So I started playing around and I came up with this, this, all these patches are a fabric collage. So there's no sewing patches or pieces together, no piecing whatsoever. So we're just covering the intersections where they overlap with bias tape. So this is vintage bias tape. And what's fun about bias tape is you can curve it a bit. So if when you're putting your pieces on, your scraps, you might have a seam. Now in this case, there isn't. This is all one solid piece, which is also kind of fun to do too. But you can kind of angle it if your seam, uh, not seams, but if your pieces, your horizontal or your vertical overlaps don't perfectly line up which to me I think that's more fun anyway is when they're not perfectly you know like a lattice I like them all wiggly like that so in the case of this bag let me open it for you you can see that I tried to have things go kind of not perfectly straight and that's completely up to you if you decide you want yours to be you know either your horizontal or your vertical lines to be straight then that all is something that you do when we do the fabric collage which we'll do in just a moment so i just wanted to kind of show you a bit closer up some of the details first of all i just love that it is standing on its own really good and it's almost square bottom little tiny bit rectangle but it's basically a square bottom bag which is fun and also the drawstring really is easy of course you know that depends on what you pick for your drawstring but as long as you're making you put something in there that is smaller than the casing that i have then it, it is great lovely and then of course i've got a little interior zip with a little surprise pocket lining so we'll do that but this was really fun really fun to design really fun to make and i put the handle on opposite of the seams so that way you can hold it you can wear it on your shoulder but you can also grab it like that when you're just walking about what you'll need 
for materials. So I'm using fusible fleece. As you know, I'm quite addicted. If, by the way, you see a cord, I'm uh, experimenting with a microphone to see if that will give me uh, kind of consistent volume. Anyway, fusible fleece and medium weight interfacing. This is all heat and bond. And for a size, for this size bag, which let me show you the size. Top to bottom, 13 and a half. The width from seam to seam is about 12 and a half. The depth, what we're gonna do is six inches. We're gonna do one whole piece and I'll explain the, the lines in a second. 35 inches long and then the width is 14 and a half. So 14 and a half by 35 length. And for the lining, we're gonna add a bit of interfacing, exact same measurements. 14 and a half by 35. We'll need one little piece of interfacing, again, medium weight, and this is doubled. So this is 16 this way and eight this way. So that's the interfacing. For your exterior, of course, you're gonna need scraps, all kinds of fun scraps. I'm My theme, because I wanted to be happy, is kind of oranges, reds, yellows, and then complementary other bright color prints as well. Your lining, which is that exact same measurement. So 35 by 14 and a half. If you don't have yardage like that, you certainly can have a front and a back piece and sew them together. The reason why I wanted to have one full piece was I wanted my, uh, in this case it's, it's seam binding I, or binding tape, I wanted it to go all the way across the bottom in one piece. So that's why I did that, but certainly you could have two different pieces that would have a seam down the middle like that. Then I have a pocket which is that same interfacing, eight by 16. For the casing at the top of the bag, you will need two pieces that are five and a quarter by 14 and a half, two pieces of that. And that is why I have those two lines on my interface or on my fusible fleece, because this middle section here, leaving the five inches here and five inches here. All this middle section will be the collage and we're gonna stop there and then we'll add the casing portion, the top portion of the bag to either side. Plenty of ribbons, trims, uh, lace if you wanna go that direction. I, I am staying, I think I have one piece of lace in here, maybe, maybe not. Um, I'm staying away from lace um, for this particular bag, but I'm definitely going to utilize a lot of my laces in other bags. A strap. Now what I found for my bag, the one I've already made and the one we're gonna do today, is I like these belt, webbing belts that um, I can cut and use as straps. So I have, this one is, this is 27 inches and it all really depends on how long you want. If you want it just to be a wrist uh, kind of top strap for uh, hanging on to, you can make that smaller. Or if you wanted it to also go around your shoulder, then uh, that is the right size for that. You can go maybe 28. It, you just measure what is what is best. and. Although I'm fine with this 
just black like that, I thought it would be fun to add color. And I happened to find this in my stash, which is a wired ribbon. So it's got wire on either side. So I just decided to sew that right on. I have a zip for the interior pocket. And since the pocket is eight inches, you want your zipper to be two inches shorter. And that's just the teeth portion. So I had a longer zip that I wanted to use and I just already have done my um, stabilizing stitches there so that I can go ahead and cut that. I might as well do that now. And now I have a six inch zip that we will sew in. And uh, lastly, as I said, a variety of ribbons, trims, bias tape, if you have it, seam tape, whatever. This is what I've decided to do with this bag is do a variety of different ones for the horizontal. And then for the vertical, I'm gonna go with this one. And I happen to have just enough to also have this be my drawstring as well. And for a drawstring for this bag, we'll need two lengths of 36 inches each. And you don't want it to be any wider than a half inch because you'll need both strings to go in that casing. So you don't want it to be too thick. So half inch at the most is what we're gonna do. So that is what we're doing. I think I cut, because these are the horizontal ones, you only need 14 and a half inches across. So I just did 15 inches to be safe. So that's what you'll need to start. I am going to use both straight stitch and my zigzag. You don't have to do zigzag at all. I just like the look. I always feel like it's an extra little uh, texture. So I didn't do it on the horizontal ones. I just did a straight stitch on the horizontal and then just on the vertical, I did the zigzag. So we're gonna do the horizontal first, then the vertical. The first step is to do your fabric collage or your patches and I will take you over to the iron first. So I have my fusible glue side up with my line where I want to start my collage portion. I have my iron, I have my scraps over here, and just a scissor. And you've seen me do this before, so I'll just kind of, for those that haven't, I'll just go real brief through this sped up. But what you want to be thinking about is lining up to a certain degree your horizontal and vertical overlapping intersections of your pieces. Again, it's you don't have to be perfect and they kind of surprise you later where they ended up. So uh, you may be planning really, really well and then you find an errant intersection that you didn't know was out of place, which is fine. The other thing is you can have solid, you know, a piece of fabric that you have an intersection coming above it and then no intersection, that's fine. You can put your ribbon or bias tape right straight through it. That's, that's just fine. So you don't have to have intersection, 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 intersection. You can throw a, a solid piece in there too. And there's no rules. That's why I like this. So you can have as many intersections going this way and intersections going this way. Have fun with this and have as many variety or no variety. I mean, literally you could have just a, just one piece of fabric on here and then put ribbons or trims on there too. You don't have to do this patchwork. I just need it. I need Scrappy in my life.
We're gonna wait on these, which is the top of the bag. We're gonna wait on that for a bit. First, we're going to take it to the machine and just sew from this side a little stay stitch, just so we can secure the sides of these pieces. Just that side and this side. Don't worry about the tops yet. I've trimmed my overhangs on both sides here just to get those out of my way. And now we start with the horizontal ribbons and trims and bias binding. So if you do have binding or a bias tape or seam binding, just make sure that if you do have a short side like that, a short flap, that that's facing down because you don't want to worry about having that on the top. Okay, so I am now just going to place this on here, center my intersection or my raw edge, I should say. My raw edge centered right here across. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mostly, maybe this one will only need one row of stitches, but this one will need two. If you have a double needle, that's great. Good for you. <laughs> I don't. So I'm going to just go down one side and then back the other and then add my next one on. So as you can see, this next one, say I decide to do, let's see, we'll do this red ribbon here. No, I want to do a different texture. Okay. So this rickrack. So I have a raw edge here, but I don't the rest of the way. That's great. That's fine. So I'm just going to cover that. And then this gives you an opportunity as well if you want to make it kind of diagonal because you have this space to work with now. The next one here is a full raw edge all this way across. So I can decide to do that. Or maybe I'll do this one here and this one here. Or maybe I'll do this one here. Ah, this is what I love about, Im you know, it's, it's improv creativity. You just make a decision on the fly based on what looks good or feels right to you. No pattern, no plan, love it. It appears I was not recording when I started that. Of course, I'm using variegated thread too. Forgot to mention that, because uh, why wouldn't you? <laughs> horizontal ribbons trims done and I wanted to show you a couple of the ones that I chose so I have two I think a red one as well yep that are I think vintage piping but I treated it like it was a trim and I think that looks kind of cool um, the other thing is where is it up here somewhere oh here this yellow rickrack so there was no raw seams horizontally on this one, or raw edges. But I didn't like how much of a space there was, so I went ahead and added one, so you can do that as well. 
I'm leaving this bigger space here in the middle. You don't have to do this, but it just happens to be where the bottom will be. So now is time for the vertical ones. So I had to change which one I am using for the vertical. For some strange reason, when I was cutting these for the horizontal, I just went ahead and cut my vertical ones the same size. I don't know what I was thinking. So I had to, <laughs> they were too short. So I had to go with um, another one and that's fine. So I'm gonna aim it to start basically at that line here. And then when we sew the piece that goes on the top for the casing, that will be hidden in the seam. That is done. All our raw edges are covered. Doesn't that look pretty? Bright and happy. Love it, love it. Next thing we wanna do is add these top portions for the casing. Our casing will be right there for our drawstring. So you're just going to line up. I've trimmed, obviously, the ends is best. I mean, it, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you line that up with the mark that you made, and you're going to do a quarter inch seam, and you're going to do that to both sides. This one over here. I have sewed the top portions on and I top stitched that as well. And I realized that I probably said that these were five and a quarter inches, but in reality, they're five and a half. So I just wanna make sure that I clarify that five and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. Okay, so what we're going to do now is cut our box corners get that out of the way so i suggest you know putting a few pins in there just so you know everything's nice and straight so i'm going to do a three inch box bottom which will give us six inches so now you can cut those out i just do it with a scissor Be careful if your scissors nice and sharp that you don't go too far. Box bottom. Now, if at this point I said if it was okay, it that it is okay if you had a front and a back, if you're working with a front and a back instead of one full piece, that's fine too. Um, just make sure that you are adding your a seam allowance if you're going to be seaming this up at the bottom. Now we can set this aside. You can go ahead and do the same thing to the lining right now. And again, if your lining is two pieces, do this after you have sewed it together. My lining is fused to my interfacing. Now let's work on the pocket. It also has interfacing on it. So 
This was the eight inch by the 16. And what we're gonna do is start at the top, turn it over to the wrong side. I'm gonna use a wood ruler so it doesn't have a glare on my <laughs> ruler when I'm doing this for you. It's old, so hopefully it won't throw me off. Okay, you want to draw a line an inch down. So one inch, three eighths of an inch. Then you want to draw a line an inch away from the edges on either side. An inch, an inch, an inch, three eighths of an inch. Now I just kind of eyeball this. I draw a mark on either side in the middle. And then I draw a line. Eventually that is going to be where you cut. And then I do a little triangle. This right here, this box is where your zipper is going to show. And right now, after I put it on the lining, we're going to sew right around this line here. So let's put it on the lining. Now our pocket is going to be five inches from the top because we'll have that casing there. So we need to make sure that we don't have the casing. Find my center of my pocket and the center of my lining. You can press this if you want. I just need to eyeball it, so. Match those up. One, two, three, four, five. Right there. So when the pocket is done, it'll come up like this. So it won't hit your box bottom and it won't hit your casing. And then you want to pin this. Just give it a couple pins to hold it. And this is obviously right sides together. And like I said, we now are going to go to the machine and stitch this line down here, this line, and up. I have sewn right here, made a box. Now we're going to cut the little triangles as well as that center line. But before we do, just to make things a little easier, I like to put this up and press that. Press those seams nice and crisp. So there, here, and the sides. And that just makes it a little bit easier when we do the next step. So now, with everything together, I'm making a little snip in the center there so that I can get my scissors in there. Actually, a snip works a lot better. And once you get to that triangle, put my glasses on, you clip up to the corner, but not the stitches. Now we're gonna push it through to the other side. And I like to start from the wrong side here because I can see where the seam is. See there? So I want to 
finger press it first to where I want it, press it with the iron. And then flip it over and do the same from the other side. Just make sure it's all pressed nicely. Now let's grab the zip. Now you want to position your zipper on the other side so that it shows nicely. My pocket is not behaving. If you have any kind of zip pull, you want that to be on the outside here. So line that up. Now you can use pins to hold this in place while you take it to the machine, but I like to use my handy glue baste and just put a little glue. Now I'm using these decorative scallops, so that's kind of easy to do. And that way, it's a little easier when you take it to the machine. So I'm going to make another box and sew that zipper in place. So zip is done or at least from this side is. Now we need to flip it over and sew the pocket together. It's time to sew our exterior and our interior together. And we're going to just sew the sides. We're not gonna worry about this quite yet. But before we do that, we need to make some marks to make sure that we don't sew our casing. You want to make a mark two inches from the top on both sides and then one inch down from that. And it's that one inch mark here that you're going to avoid sewing. So you're gonna sew this and you're gonna sew all that on both sides. And I'm gonna do a half inch seam allowance. It's up to you if you wanna just do a quarter inch, but just be consistent throughout if that's how you wanna sew it together. So I'm gonna do that and I'm also going to top stitch. So once I'm through with my side seams, then I'm going to top stitch on the other side. Now, let's look at the lining because it's a little different. You still have your two inch from the top and then one inch from that, and then don't sew across that. But you also need to leave an opening for turning. And typically I would say, you know, you would do three, four inches, but I'm going to have you do five and that's a bit more than my hand. Um, and the reason why is when we sew it together, pull it through, I'm going to have you do something with the, or the box corners that will make it a little bit more difficult to pull through. So it's best to have a bigger um opening now i'm also going to top stitch this after i sew it together the lining and the reason why is it makes it a lot easier to then sew your lining shut 
and I'll show you that when we come to it. You just saw me top stitch from the inside. And I do that because I want my, my seam to be nice and flat and secure. Now, regardless if you top stitch or not, you will have to do this one step. So this is where the opening is. You will need to do a box of stitching around that opening. So because I've already stitched on either side of it, I'm just gonna do a line of stitching here and a line of stitching here and that secures that opening. And I'm gonna do it to both sides. I'm gonna sew the lining together, do the same thing with that. It's now time to do your box corners. So this is how, after you've done your side seams, your corners look. So you wanna take that this way and have your seam now up the middle. And you just line that up as best you can. You're probably gonna have to be off a little bit. And the important thing is that the two of them match, both your corners match and it's as straight as you can. And that another good reason to do a half inch seam allowance because it uh, makes up for some of your imperfections there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the exterior and the interior, and then we will attach the strap to the exterior before we sew them together. First thing to attach the strap, you want to align the side seams together like that. And you're gonna find the middle front and the middle back. So either mark it here or do a little notch like I did. And you do the same thing on the other side. Like that, little notch. And that gives you the position for your strap. So I've got my strap all done. As I said, I was just gonna zigzag the ribbon onto the belt to make a strap. And I think it looks super cute. 
You put that in your bag, the exterior of your bag. This is the top of your strap. So you want right sides to right sides of the bag, right in that center. And this is kind of convenient here, right in the center of that notch. And that's where we're gonna just do a little stay stitch, maybe a quarter inch. Make sure it's not twisted in there. Right there. If you can pick up the sound of a saw going, that's my husband outside <laughs> working on his own projects. Okay, so then I'm just gonna do a stay stitch here and a stay stitch here to hold that in place. We'll turn your outside of your bag right side out and then stuff it inside your lining that has remained inside out so that your right sides are touching. Make sure your strap does not go in the interior or inside your interior, but rather on the outside because you want your strap to get sewn between the layers. So just make sure of that. And the first thing to do is line up the side seams. So I'm gonna go ahead and line up the side seams and then pin it or clip it all around. And then I'm going to do a half inch seam all the way around the lip of the bag. So two things I wanna show you here. Number one, the lining. As I said, when you sew your, when you top stitch your seams down like this, then it makes it a really nice opening and you can easily, once the bag is turned right side out, you can easily do an invisible stitch without worrying about any raw edges. So that's kind of nice that it allows you to do that. Secondly, before we turn it right side out, I want to show you a little trick. So I'm gonna pull the end exterior out so that both of them now are inside out. You see that? Now, both your exterior box corners and your interior corners. You're going to sew together. Now when you sew them together, don't sew on the inside of your seam line, sew on the outside. And what this is going to do is your lining will then be sewed in at the bottom to your exterior and you never have to worry about a baggy lining or it coming out or whatever. It's just kind of a nice way to finish that off. So to make this easier, so you don't twist these, you have it laying flat like this, and all. And what you wanna do is put the bottoms together, like this. So now, each corner, one each, lining, exterior, you can sew together. So like I said, make sure that you sew them within the seam allowance, not outside of the seam allowance. So you do both sides. You do this side. And you come over here and you do the other side. This may be a little bit more awkward when you're turning it right side out, but I promise it'll be worth it. Now you can sew your lining 
together. Again, it's so much easier to do it this way now. I'm gonna do a little invisible hand stitch there. And then after that's done, press your top here. And then I'm gonna do one quarter inch top stitch. And then we're going to sew our casing in. I have top stitched my quarter of an inch all the way around. Looking nice. So now we need to add the casing for the drawstring. I have drawn a light pencil mark on either side of this hole. And you just want to match those up. You can lay it down like this and just with a straight edge from this mark to this mark draw a line and then the second line as well so then now you have two lines that you can sew on so that's the next step is to make your casing Now it's time to string our drawstrings. And what I've made is, this is a vintage seam binding. And I have done a little zigzag on either side, just like the strap. Because of course, I needed more color, of course. So that's kind of cute, huh? So, safety pin, stick it in there. So it goes, the hole goes all the way through, but you want it to go in between the layers. So that's where you're stinging it in and string it all the way around till it comes back out here. Once you have both through, and it works so nice. You wanna tie these so they stay together, even them out a bit. Don't work with them a little bit. But anyway, once you get them even and you tie them, I have decided to put a little tab on the end finish that off and what I'm doing is just my little corners that I cut out from my lining so they're three inches square and I fold it in half and then fold each side to the center of that and then fold that then fold it this way and then those get folded in as well. So now when I put this on, I'm gonna sew it on like this. I'll get that all tucked in there nicely. I'm gonna sew it across and then to both sides, there won't be any raw edges at all. And now there are two two cutie bags. <laughs> oh, they just make me so happy when I see them. I hope that you enjoyed this project as much as I did, and it will encourage you to add your scraps and maybe some vintage ribbon and trims that you've been hanging on to and put them all together and make a great bag. And this bag is great for so many different things. Obviously, it's a great bag to use every day or as a project bag. It's a good good one too. It, it's pretty roomy and very, very sturdy. Thank you for joining me for this video. 
and I am happy to say that the one on the right that we made today will be in my Etsy shop for anyone to purchase. So I hope you check that out. The first one I made, the one on the left, I am keeping for myself. I will see you in the next video. Bye.